Tavares. Good evening. Well, it's been a good, it's been a good three years. I appreciate that. Good evening, folks. Yeah. Hi there. Welcome to the December 6th meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I'll be acting chair tonight. Uh, our typical normal chair is not here tonight, so bear with me a little bit. Um, first order of business is called the meeting to order, uh, and the second is to uh, review and approve the minutes of the September 26, 2017 meeting. Uh, we only have three members present tonight that were at that meeting, so I propose that we uh, push that off until we can get four members present to approve those minutes. Okay. Well, actually, um, we discussed this the last time, if you recall, we had a number of uh, <laughs> minutes where that was the case and uh, we determined that last time uh, we don't need to have um, four members who are actually at that meeting to approve the minutes. Just um, a majority? Just, just, you know, we don't need to have any of them actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in fact we would automatically have at least one because of the makeup of the seven members of the committee. Uh, all we're really doing is, is uh, approving the the uh, accuracy of our secretary in, in compiling the minutes uh, and uh, no Understood. one who is absent today so far as I know Ben has submitted anything to indicate that that they have a problem with the minutes from the last meeting that's correct so okay so I propose that we go forward I this situation is akin to uh, something that, that could occur in any given year. Uh, for example, at uh, the next meeting in January, uh, I will not be here. Uh, so consequently, other people might have been in that position too, and we wouldn't have four people. They could go on ad infinitum had we not been able to approve those minutes. Sure. Uh, I'm comfortable with that. That's fine. So there are three members, Matt, John, and Stan. You, you guys were here. I will abstain from, from the vote, but if I hear a motion, uh, happy to entertain. John? Sure. I'll move. Second. Awesome. All those in favor of approving the minutes of the September 26, 2017 meeting as uh, presented? Genetics. Thank you, guys. Uh, there is no old business, so we'll move on to new business. And the first order of new business is to hear the request of Rachel Lomas, co-owner of 61 Charles E. Jordan Road, map R8, lot 43, to create an accessory dwelling unit within a single family dwelling based on... Yes, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, before we get to the first item of new business, let me skip down to the, the fifth item because uh, we're going we're gonna to shorten our agenda here. Uh, the fifth item on the agenda is to hear the Superior Court remand of five Birch Knolls, map U5, lot 15, which was originally heard at the Zoning Board on May 23, 2017. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have four members uh, present tonight that heard that uh, that, that, were, that were present at the original hearing um, and in consulting with uh, both sides of this argument we've, uh, we're proposing to, to table this uh, pending a, a special meeting that will be scheduled prior to the end of the year. So in order to do that uh, I think I'll need a motion from, from someone. So moved. Yep, Stan, second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Ben, you. you can give us two days of time to make at least one of them. And you can't get it done in this way. For our and for us, it doesn't have to be done in one way. Understood. Thank you. Okay, so now back to item number one on the agenda, which is to hear the request of Rachel Lomas, 
co-owner of 61 Charles E. Jordan Road, map R8, lot 43, to create an accessory dwelling unit within a single family dwelling based on section 1975 of the zoning ordinance. So I'll, I'll take the, yeah, the applicants uh, is welcome to present at the podium. Please start with your, your name and introduce yourself before right. starting. Good evening, I'm Rachel Lomas. Thank you for taking the time to review this this evening. Um, I'm requesting an accessory dwelling unit for the, our house that we moved from Skowhegan, 1968 um, home that we've moved to Cape Elizabeth. And um, so the, this would fall into the parameters of the house and, and the footprint pretty much of the original house. The original house in Skowhegan had a small kitchenette and a second entrance. Um, I think back then it was for servants. No servants anymore. My parents' um, house flooded in Baton Rouge last summer, and we're moving them part-time to Atlanta to live with my sister, and then they'll be spending most of the summers with us. Um, and so it'd be nice for them to have, you know, a place to make breakfast in the morning. They get up really early, and so we feel like it fits within the requirements and would like to have this accessory dwelling unit. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Ben, do you have any background on this or anything to add? Uh, we, we may ask questions, but uh, <laughs> you're, you're welcome to have a seat first or stay. I don't have much. This is an interesting situation because the house was it's a very old house that was uh, moved from Skowhegan. So a very, very interesting case. And uh, the kitchen was original to the house, but I explained that the lot was a, it's a single family lot, so in order to have a second kitchen, it would need this type of approval. Okay. Thanks. Are there any questions from the board members to the applicant? Uh, just a couple of quick ones. Uh, because of the criteria that we have to apply uh, to this situation, um, as I understand it, there is no exterior change being proposed here. No, it's, it's, the house is exactly the same, and the kitchen's in the same unit. There was always two entrances, you know, there's always two front kind of entrances to the house, so it's, it's pretty. Okay. And, and is the accessory dwelling unit held in the same ownership as the house? Yes. Thank you. I'll ask a couple questions. I, it, <clears throat> We have we got some materials, uh, a survey, a site plan, and some some architectural information. What's the current state of the property and the house? It has the house been moved already? And it's been moved. It's um, uh, it's it's got a lot of work to do. But the you know all the exterior it's been it's been put back together. So now it's you know there's a lot of you know when you move a house it was moved and more pieces than we planned and um, the process wasn't exactly how we anticipated so it, it's been a different process than I thought but the house is fully constructed you know not the inside but the outside is fully intact now and um, so it's been fully moved great um, has the has there been a, a septic system constructed yes my, my contractor and architect are here. it has been yep uh, it's it's been designed, but it has not been constructed yet. It's been designed and approved, okay, but not constructed. It's designed to include that. Numbers. I'm sorry. It's been designed to include that. Numbers. Right. Right. Yeah, my husband wasn't part of the. I wasn't part of the septic part. <laughs> I left that to my husband. Uh. It, can you describe sort of the, the, the neighborhood, the nature of what's going on next door and across the street? So it's down Charles Jordan Road. There are really, there's a one, there aren't very many neighbors. There's a farm in front of us. Um, and it's basically woods, mostly woods. And then there's another house kind of across the street, not directly across the street, but down the road and across the street. So there's not a lot of houses around. else, John or Matt? I'll just refer to um, one, of, one of the provisions in the ordinance that talks about uh, the people that live in this house, in this uh, accessory dwelling, 
has to have a close personal relationship with the residents of the main dwelling. Okay, so it's, it's part of the application, but I just want to make sure that you're aware that there's a, a curious requirement in the ordinance. Sure. Well, yeah, it's mostly, like I said, my parents, I don't know if you remember the flood a year, my parents have, we've had to, we're in the middle of remodeling and selling their house, and we bought them a house, a small apartment in, in Atlanta where my sister lives, but they're going to, we're definitely going to have to s split up the time, so they should be with us in the summer and with my sister, and I also have, you know, three kids, two about to be in college, so, you know. Nope. You, uh, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> I've um, got a lot. You're saying that, that this requirement goes with the property forevermore. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so in the same 30 years time it's that that requirement still is the problem that it needs to be someone close to us living yes. there yeah okay. yeah with three kids i anticipate the family to yeah. get much better so. i came up with one more one more thought that i forgot to ask oh, can you describe the what the parking is today and what what the are they going to well, have a car no, there was no, so that it was a it was an empty lot before that so there's no prof um, so we've got three four four parking spots so I've got two teenagers that already drive in Texas you can drive at 16 where we live now so we've got three cars and then my parents so that would be the four parking spots and there there's it looks like from the side plan there's plenty of room for for four cars in there oh yeah it's I mean there's a huge yeah and you won't even see any of the parkings behind that so you won't even see it so there's plenty of room sure. it's on like over two I mean it's a huge yeah. Yeah, it looks like a pretty. Yeah, I mean, not it's not a huge drive. property, but for the ha you know, there's plenty of room. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, sure. <laughs> anything else, John? Anything? No. Okay. Okay. Thank you very okay, much. Okay. Thank you for your time. Uh, are there any members of the public here that wish to speak on this item? Ben, did we receive any correspondence? I did not. This? Okay. Okay, well, that will end the public comment uh, portion of the meeting, uh, and we'll move on to board discussion. So, um, any thoughts on, on the proposal? I guess my initial thought is that um, having looked at the application and the information provided in the application, as well as the testimony provided by the applicant, it looks like that uh, all the applicable criteria for 19.7-5B are being satisfied by the applicant. Um, the exception is criteria four, which uh, does not apply to this situation as I understand it, since there is no addition. Correct, and I'll point out we're also reviewing this under section 19-5-5 as an accessory unit as a conditional use. That's right. And I would agree with you, Stana. I think I think all the sort of dimensional requirements and so forth in section 1975 are pretty clearly spelled out in the application. Uh, they appear to be to be met, and uh, we can go down through uh, some of the conditional use um, standards. Um, the the one that I had a question about was the septic system, and it sounds. Uh, just because I was unsure of what the status was. Um, sounds like it's been designed appropriately and approved. Uh, I, looking towards conditions, I would just suggest a condition that uh, the new wastewater disposal system be installed as designed and in compliance with uh, all local and state ordinances and laws. Matt, anyway? No, I would agree with that condition as well. Okay. Yeah. John, you're good.
Okay. Well, if there's there's nothing further, uh, do I hear a motion regarding this? Yeah. Having the, uh, considered these additional uh, standards under the conditional use approval, um, it it sounds like uh, with your uh, condition for approval, uh, they will also have been met, and. Uh, since both sets of standards will have been met, then I will move uh, to approve uh, this request for conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit. All those in favor? Four to zero. <clears throat> so I'll read the findings of fact. This is a request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit in an existing single family dwelling per section 19-7-5 of the zoning ordinance. The subject property is 61 Charles Jordan Road, map R8, lot 43. The applicant is Rachel Lomas, who is a co-owner of the property. Based on the application submitted, we make the following additional findings of fact. The proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. The proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. The proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. The proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. The design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design appearance or architecture. And number six, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section 19-7-5B of the zoning ordinance. Any discussion on those? I, I would question uh, number five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood. I mean, this is an existing house. Is that, do we feel like that's an appropriate finding of fact? You could change that. You could scratch it completely, I think. Yeah. Any any objection to getting rid of that? No. Any other comments or discussion on the findings of fact? No. Uh, two conditions. I, I mentioned one condition that the new wastewater disposal system should be has been uh, designed per and approved by the local um, code enforcement officer, and it shall be installed uh, in compliance with the approved design. I would say. Sure. If that's everyone agrees to that. Yes. Okay, if there's nothing else. Uh... Move to approve the findings of fact and the condition. Second. So I point of order, um, as amended, Stan? As amended. Thank you. Thank um, you. I agree. All in favor? Four zero. Thank you very much.
I think we're going to we're going to shift the uh, agenda items <laughs> again in order to to tackle one item, which will probably take a minute and a half, um, and maybe we can get get someone out of here a little a little quicker. Um, so we're going to hear item number four next, which is to hear the Superior Court remand of 19 Cunner Lane, map U4, lot 26-1, originally heard at the Zoning Board on June 28, 2016. Uh, so this one, this is a cut and dry remand from the Law Court with very specific instructions for the Zoning Board. So the Zoning Board is just going to perform those instructions and move on. <laughs> so I understand it. This is, this is simply uh, asking us to exercise an administrative function to, to uh, allow the process to proceed. I believe so. I would propose that we just read the decision and, and vote to approve or, well, hopefully vote to approve that. So here's a draft um, draft decision <coughs> provided by Ben. So based on the law court mandate dated September 19, 2017, we, the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals have determined that the code enforcement officer's approval of the building permit did not conform with the provisions of the municipal ordinance. The CEO shall therefore deny the permit application. Do I have any discussion on that? Okay, so I have a motion to approve though. As, as stated, I move to to uh, admit that as as previously stated. Seconded by John. All those in favor? Four to zero. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your patience. Uh, now we will move on to items two and three, which will go, I think they'll be reviewed at the same time. Um, but we will be making, voting on, on two different items here. So item number three, I'm sorry, item number two is to hear the request of Kevin Brown representing Thomas and Nancy uh, Rudy, Ruddy, Ruddy, owners of 14 Lawson Road, map U8, lot 24, for a variance to construct a garage addition 15 feet 6 inches from the property line where the zoning ordinance requires a 20 foot setback. And along with that, we'll also hear the request of Kevin Brown representing Thomas and Nancy Ruddy. Again, owners of 14 Lawson Road, map, U, map U8, lot 24, to enlarge an existing non-conforming single-family dwelling. I'll turn it over to the applicant. Hi. Thank you. Kevin Brown, Kevin Brown Architecture. Um, as you mentioned, we're here to request a uh, variance and an a expansion for the non-conforming, or a non-conforming expansion for the house at um, 14 Lawson Road. And um, it's a very... We set out to sort of add a two-car garage behind the house uh, or somewhere on the property, and the best location that we felt uh, was where to locate it was behind the house just because of it's a, the narrow lot that it is. It's 70 feet wide, and we only have about a 20-foot building envelope. So, you know, we looked at potentials for putting a, um, a garage in front of the house in the beginning, um, but in doing that, a, 20, a standard two-car garage, 24 by 24, um, would pretty much take up the whole view of the front of the house. Um, and it is a, and I'm sure you've seen the, the pictures in the, in, the, uh, in the packets, but it is a very charming sort of historic house. And our whole goal along the way was to preserve that sort of look and not, you know, 
not put a big two-car garage in front of it. So we've, we've analyzed uh, neighboring properties um, in the neighborhood. We, we, in your map, there's, I think we had an aerial photo that showed 10 different properties that had two-car garages. Um, so we used that, and you know, eight of those that we had in there were two-car garage. Others were, some of them were single-car garages. Um, we chose to tuck the, the structure behind the house to not ruin the integrity of the existing house, but at the same time, um, just make it easier to connect it so you can actually walk from the garage into the house. If we were to put a garage in front of the house, you, you would have to walk outside to get inside because there is no basement under the current house, which, and there's a, a slope, in, quite a bit of a slope in the land. So in terms of trying to save cost and construction cost, that's what we chose to. But in doing the 24 by 24 standard garage behind the house, we, we tried to get it in the building envelope as much as we can, we could. But because of the angle of the house and sort of the back edge of the, the property sloping, we did have to poke into the, uh, into the setback a little bit more, about, I think it was about four feet, just to make a garage fit behind the house. Um, and then the other parts, and I don't you want me to address both parts of the, the two different permits right now? Or I think so, right? yeah. I, I would, I mean, I, in my mind, they, the whole they go hand in hand, so I, I would present um, the information. The other part of what we're asking for is an expand, a vertical expansion on top of a footprint, an uh, existing footprint. Um, See if I can see it in the picture. So um, the one side of the, the west side of the house, I would say, is closest to the property line on the west side. Um, let me just find. It. Oh, right here. We have an existing first floor area that we're just proposing to add vertically on top of that for um, additional space. You know, right now it's a seasonal home, but the goal is to be you know, more of a full-time home down the road and having just a little bit more nicer sized bedrooms and an additional bath is, is the goal of that. Um, the, the other part of the equation is on the east side of, of the existing house, there's a shed um, slash garage. You can see the roof of it right here. And if you look at the site plan that we have in, our, in, the, in the packet there, you'll see that, and I can pull up the site plan. There's an existing shed that's dashed on the, on, and so our, what we're proposing to do is remove that shed and take the, the size of that and add it on to the, uh, the, low, the first floor part of the house that sticks out this way. What that does is it pulls it further away from the property line, making it more, it's still non-conforming, but less non-conforming, um, but you know, it, it's based, it's the identical square footage would be right there. So that would be that part of it. And then, you know, we've, we've chatted with the rear neighbors in terms of trying to, you know, work with them, understanding that, you know, there is a potential for a view to be blocked. So we have one area that we could have built up in the building envelope that we decided not to, just because that would block the rear um, property owner's uh, view. So that's in fact why we did the, the expansion over on the west side of the, the second floor and gave up you know, the use of our, where we would have an actual building envelope uh, expansion. Um, so on this, if you look at, the, at the, uh, the elevations that were in the packet, the sketch elevations, we have, a, uh, on, we have just a one story piece looking at it from the rear of the house and there's a rooftop deck basically. So there's nothing going up in that. So it's not any more of a block of a view than it currently is. Um, and the garage, the way the garage is positioned, the first floor of the garage is a little bit wider than the second floor. The second floor is a little narrower and it's, you know, it's, it's behind the mass of the main house. So that's, that's the other reason that we tucked the garage back there to not block any more of a view from that, from the rear of the house. That way, you can kind of see that the new structures are shaded darker than just the regular, so it gives you a pretty good idea of what's there versus what what we're adding. Um, and then uh, 
just to give you a visual of the, you know, some pictures from the rear of the house. This is the rear of the house. So, in essence, this you're seeing the top of the shed that would be good, would go away. That square footage would be added on to this one-story piece, and that come out. They'll come out to about here. This roof would be a flat roof now, and the garage is really not going to be any further past the, the angle that where the stick picture was taken of the front of the house. So the majority of the garage is behind the main part of the house, trying to preserve the view between our, this house and the next, next door neighbor's house. Um, I think overall, I think that's you know, sort of the overall rule of what, we, what we're trying to create and ask for tonight. Great, thank you. Yep. Sure, Ben. I, I did receive some information today. Uh, I, I have a little packet for each of you. Uh, some, some of it I've already emailed to you. So you've seen some of it. I, I have two emails here in support of the project. Uh, I also received two emails that have concerns about the project. And I also have a standard boundary survey. So it looks like the two new ones that we haven't seen, one is from Robin and Ted McCarthy. Where are they? They, 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 they live across Lawson they're Road. Across Lawson. That's correct. And they're, they're saying uh, it's all good by us. So I guess right. they, would, they don't oppose the and, and also the residents of 10 Lawson Road, Debbie Schmidt and Robert Warshaw. Which is? Immediate to the west. Right next door? Yeah, right. So they've, they said they've reviewed the proposed architectural drawings and they are in support of the proposal. That's correct. So that would be these folks here. Right. And, and across. And across. And then the, the emails and uh, also uh, hard copies of things that have been proposed are from the two abutters to the rear. Oh, I'm sorry, not this, this one and this one. Okay. So Jeremy Sear, that property has changed hands. Okay. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. It, it, is, it is Sear, it right? Yeah. Really yeah. And Daniel Cotit, who? Yes. Are they? That's correct. We don't have it. This is. Oh, this is the Potit lot. Yep. Here. Yep. Do we know if? Any of these folks are here tonight? I, I don't think they're here. They both had conflicts, so they wanted to submit okay. things in writing. Uh, I, they were possibly going to try to send someone. I don't know if anybody's here to speak on sure. their behalf. Okay. Uh, well, are there any questions from the board to the, to the applicant? Again, we're, we're reviewing this in sort of two parts. There's, a, there's the variance, which is to encroach into the rear setback by four feet. And pardon me as I shuffle papers here.
Let me start off with a question concerning the variance application, if I can, Mike. Sure. Go ahead, Stan. Um, I'm looking at your application, and with respect to the criteria that, that we have to look at, and, uh, that's, of course, part of the application form. And I'm, I'm looking in particular at um, item E, which is the granting of the variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. And on your application, you have C attached. And um, there is a two-page attachment to the application. I, I'm not seeing where that is specifically addressed. Could you tell me where that is specifically addressed? Uh, hold on one second. Oh, you're right. It's not in there. <laughs> it was. Um, Yes, we, for some reason that one was left off the, the application. I'm sorry about that. But the, um, I, I don't know, you know, it, it's ordinary with any other con construction. It's not going to really impact it any more than any, any kind of other addition would off the house. You know, they're, it's not disturbing any different drainage patterns that's currently there, um, whether it was behind the house or in front of the house. And you know, there'll be, so, there'll be um, measures taken during construction for silt fences and, and whatnot. What about on the side of the house where I see a long driveway projector? Right, that, well, we will be leveling off the grade a little bit too because there is water issues right now with the, there's a rock ledge that basically drains into the house so we're trying to help that situation and trying to, to make the drainage to not move because right now the water kind of there's a the shed that's there there's a big rock ledge and the water just comes off of that and so, so we're trying to make that better in the process thank you I have two brief questions. Um, what's the foundation of the house? Is it cinder block or? Cinder block right now. And what's the foundation of the shed? It's, um, it's actually on a, I believe it's a slab. And, and is any part of the shed touching the house or the foundation of the house? I, I raise this because there was an application um, across the street that was before us, probably during the summer. Yeah. And they had a, what they called a summer house. Yeah. Um, that you know overlooked the water, and they wanted to move it. And there was there was trouble here, or trouble in that application, because um, um, it, I think my recollection is that you just can't pick up the, the summer house and move it to another spot on your land. Yeah. The garage has a similar issue for me, um, as, unless uh, you can persuade it otherwise. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here. Is that if you remove it, then there has to be another portion of the ordinance that allows you to get the benefit of that space. Um, so if you if it's removed, you know it's as if it never happened. It was never there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was saying whether it was touched the house, and that's why I wanted to get oh, some thoughts on that. Like a point of order, uh, on the, uh, when we discuss these points, I know that we've talked about having them concurrently heard. Um, um, I think that might not be, a, factually that's fine, uh, but as a procedural matter, I think we should choose one and, and then the other, just so that we're I would agree on with the you. record. I would agree with you. Okay. And, you know, it seems like we've started in on the, on the variance, which in my mind, it's kind of a higher standard, anyways. Um, so why don't we why don't we look at 
um, look at the proposal for the variance request uh, first and then okay. if, if that is approved we can move on to the the expansion of the non-conforming structure so with the variance, we're looking at uh, section 19-5-2B and those standards. <clears throat> um, I would propose that we we sort of hit them one by one, um, and we can start with uh, A, which is the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Thoughts on that? I mean, the, the applicant is saying that it's the the width of this lot um, makes it impractical to put a garage anywhere else. Yes, perhaps we can ask the applicant some of the questions for that criteria, move to the public, and then move along to that dialogue. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, I think they've provided these explanations in writing. So are there any further questions for the, for the applicant? Um, if, well, I, have, I do have um, two questions and so that you'll hear it and then we can get some of your insight. Um, on, on the criteria, there's, there's two points that I wanted to get your comments on. And the first is the practical difficulty is not the result taken by the applicant. Oh, and then there's the phrase for prior owner. And so, by, what's your view on that? Do you think by taking into account uh, some sensitivities to the neighbors, uh, you can get around that criteria? Um, or, you, you know, essentially, the applicant wants to have a garage and some expansion of the house. And to have those two criteria met, you either go without the bill or you put it in the back of the house. No other spots is on the table. I have a meandering question, so let me restructure. Okay. <laughs> is it your view that by, by currently submitted the application is not a practical difficulty being created by the applicant? I'm not sure I quite understand what you're All right. Yeah. Um, I'll find the, the section of the code that talks about practical difficulty, so I'll come back to that one. Okay. All right, and the next question is um, whether there's another feasible alternative. Um, I'm sorry, the, 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 the criteria is that there's no other feasible alternative to a variance available to the petitioner. So are you saying that there's no other options to build on this lot? Not that don't affect the character of the neighborhood and the house itself. Uh, you know, the, there's, like I said, you know, we, we went down, but I think we need a variance for that as well, wouldn't you? If you, were, you know, we, we looked at putting 24 by 24 garage here. That's the only other way that to have it connected to the house like we're proposing. You could do that, but with that, you know, then to me that affects the character of the neighborhood having and the economics of a house that you know it, it just it ruins the integrity and architectural value that the house currently has by by doing that so sure is, is it feasible is it going to change the character that you know i don't know how that plays into the sort of the what you're asking thank you uh, could i just put a marker down so i can come back to the, my earlier question sure Have you seen the photos submitted by, uh, I believe it's Mr. Sear? Yes, I have. And I think some of the concern is just the view being blocked, but we've, we've actually altered our design quite a bit to, to sort of help with that, you know, trying to minimize that, but also, have, you know, using our ability to, to potentially expand. One of the reasons that we need to go on the other side of the house to get the area that we want when we gave up part of our building envelope. Um, but I, you know, that's not, you know, some of that is not 
necessarily going to, the view is not going to be impacted by the variance that we're asking for. It's more about the non-conforming expansion, I believe. Uh, uh, yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah, yeah. sure. I have a question. Um, I, th I, I have sort of a problem. I'm not quite sure. Well, I think when we're asked to approve uh, moving into setbacks, um, you know, the, the ordinance allows for, you can build something that doesn't move any further into a setback, um, and sometimes we allow setbacks. But I think, to me, like the underlying logic of it um, is that you're not encroaching anymore on your neighbors, or you're not really encroaching on your neighbors. There aren't really any neighbors there. Let's just get realistic. It's, it's a setback to protect certain situations, but Maybe in this situation there's nothing to protect, so it's okay. Um, it bothers me that your kind of entire addition, well, the, the garage, the part that is not moving into a setback is nonetheless moving, that whole thing takes a big step uh, kind of directly at your neighbor's house. And then the setback encroachment takes another step on the outside of that. So, um, I don't know who lives in what is on this map. I'm looking at the neighborhood plan lot 20 but, and lot 23, but those are, I don't know if it's an issue of views, but by the time you're, by the time we're considering what is the ask for encroachment on a setback that is a new encroachment, um, it's a serious encroachment. I mean, it's directly added on to what's allowed so that it's kind of directly too close to these neighbors' houses, closer than the ordinance calls for. I think it's not just footage. It's where it is and what direction it's going and what it does. Am I making any sense to my fellow board? Yeah, no, and I think that the challenge is to, you know, a standard size garage is 24 by 24. That's what we have drawn. The little step to answer your question, the kitchen was, the kit, the tying into the house is, there's, the kitchen was just redone. So we needed to do that step to sort of make a connection to the house. Second. What? Right. So, right. So, at the top of the story. You introduce yourself. I'm Nancy Ruddy, um, the homeowner. So, the reason that there's that jut out next to the house is when you come to the top of the stairs, there's an existing hallway. Um, it, it, there's two walls like this, and then there's a window here. Um, the addition would be directly going straight to where that what really is in a hallway, it's like a dead end into a window. The reason that we had that jut out there was because um, if you go to the right where the addition would end inside the buildable envelope, there is currently a bathroom. We would have to remove a shower to create access to the addition. So the reason that that jut out is there is it has more, somewhat with the kitchen, but we're really to do with the second floor and access to the back of the home, um, the part that we were thinking about adding on. So that's why that's there. Well, I was talking about the garage, correct? Well, it, it is. So that's the second story of the, of the garage. It's access to all of that back there. So when you try to go to the, what we'll have above there, which, again, is we're not using our whole buildable envelope on the second floor because of um, Jerry's request. And so the only reason it juts out a little bit on the other side is to get access to that without having to move the bathroom. So there was a hardship issue. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I think, again, those are the constraints of our ordinance. I mean, the fact is, 
there's um, plenty of space on this lot to put a garage that doesn't happen to fit right there. I mean, there, there's, it's, it's not like, again, it's not like it's not further encroaching towards the actual structures of your neighbors. I mean, these protections um, that are in the statute, to me, I mean, they, they come into play here. And I, I, it might be inconvenient, <laughs> given the design of your house. Um, and I, I respect that. The house that, that I'm, I'm not totally sure, are you know, trying to is, is the variance at the end of the, the The variance is for the garage at the back of the house. You know, the so variance. The whole thing, it's not just for that triangle. It's just the, it's just the, it's kind of just the pieces at the edge of the garage. Right, it's the just the corner of the garage. The garage has already encroached sort of all the way into your, you know, your, the point of your lot that's shrinking. So by squaring off the garage, you're now jutted into the setback. I mean, it's, it's, and it's, it's all going in the wrong direction from the point that, you know, that, and once you jut into the setback on top of your new garage, to my mind, that's, really what setbacks are supposed to prevent. Um, so, I mean, as I look at this, I could say, okay, have a one-car garage, um, or whatever. Um, or, sh or shuffle it this way or that, but get it out of my setback, because you, by putting it just so, you've now asked us to approve a setback. I'm starting to repeat myself. That is. I think it's uh, not comfortable to prove it. It, it. it is doing what a setback is designed to do, which is to say to keep you from building that close to your neighbors. Or put the garage on the other side of the house. I don't know, it's on the other side of the house. <laughs> um, John is reflecting on an application that we had last year where a family up near Two Lights wanted to build a, a kitchen on the front of their house. And that kitchen would be, you know, would look down the street and go and look at the, um, the, the, the one of the lighthouses. And the problem there was, great idea, right? You know, why not have a little kitchen nook? But you're, you're, the kitchen would be in the setback. And sure enough, they had plenty of space in the back of the house to put, you know, twice, three times the size of the kitchen. It's not where the kitchen was, and so they decided not to do it. And they were asking for a variance as well, because they said, well, well, there's space in the front of their property, but there was a setback. And so where I, I'm struggling, perhaps you know, the other members are not, but I'm struggling in this, that there is space to build anything for your, that you want. It's not convenient. That's the problem. Um, and so we have a, a case that's quite fresh in our recollection as to um, another applicant asking for a variance and we, we said no because it, it, it's not, we're, we're, we don't have the, the, the a, uh, power or jurisdiction from the ordinance for us as, as the board to, uh, to allow a variance. So we're looking for a creativity to get to where you want to go sure. instead that we're, we're struggling here as to um, the point that I was raising was practical difficulty, and it is defined in the application, it's defined in the ordinance. And one of the problems here is that you, as the applicant, are creating the practical difficulty. For example, those people that wanted the kitchen nook along the street. Because you can have a kitchen nook in the back of the house when there's no kitchen, but you can still have the nook. So, um, mm -hmm. um, no, I guess, I guess, you know, in terms of the, having it still being able to have a, a garage, whether it was a two car or even a one and a half car garage in the back of the house that didn't jut in like it is, would that be accept, acceptable is the question. And I'd have to discuss to see if that's even something that would be. But the, the code enforcement officer can answer yeah. about building within the, the building envelope. What we are concerned about is the variance portion, which is the dark gray with the right. diagonal lines that's right. going through it, the, the edge. Uh, and that's what John and I are, are talking about, is that the dark gray. Matt, can I, can I clarify something? The, the variance so request like yeah. is, is for the, 
encroachment into the rear setback only because that that's the new right. encroachment right. the entirety of the dark gray is just right. is is the new structure right. the hash mark is structure that is in a setback but it's actually on the sides that's already a condition that exists so no variance is needed with that's what we're reviewing under the expansion of a non-conforming structure. But the variance itself is for this triangle that is in the rear setback. Is that correct, Ben? Yes. I see this like, I know that the application may have set it up there. I see it slightly different. Okay. And when you say that the trial, I'm talking about this portion here. Not that portion here. Correct. That's being reviewed under a different section. Yeah. No variance is needed for that. Approval is needed, but, but not the variance. And the dotted line here, um, what's the dotted line here? What's up here? I'm, <clears throat> I'm guessing that may be an old lot line that was dissolved. This dotted line. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, typically, yeah, surveyors, yeah. typically surveyors will show little dotted lines. My guess is sometime a long time ago this lot was a rectangle and then they bought the rear triangle and added it to the lot. That's typically why surveyors show little those lines. There is a dot on, the, on the, the survey version, but it's just there's no uh, key to that. Mm -hmm. Actually, here's the, here's the actual survey for the survey. Yeah, that's the copy that we have. Yeah. And they didn't call that out in the legend. The surveyor didn't. It's not a setback line, um, so we'll, we'll assume that yeah, it, it probably was an old, former, an old lot line. former property line. So in the notes section, they have a setback of um, 25 feet for the, the side and the front, and then looks like a stream setback of 20 feet. So wherever the stream was. So. <laughs> I assume that's. A, are there any streams on the property? No. Yeah, I assume that's a typo on there. Is the. I think the rear setback in this zone is 20 feet, so it's probably, probably meant to say rear. Because that was that's not listed in that section in that note. Could, could you tell me in square foot, uh, what is the area of the requested variance? Uh, it's, I would say it's maybe 10 square feet, 12. That much? What's that? That much, I mean, uh, the, I, I, your, your statement was that the garage would be 24 by 24. Right, but the this piece... This doesn't look to be that larger portion of... It, it's, it's, the area right now, if, if you were, the line, that's, but if you go along the back edge of the garage, mm -hmm. and you go back to where the where you get back into the rear setback, yes, it's about six foot four. So that's a about a six, you know. So that's I'd say it's, you know, maybe twelve under twelve square feet. I would say. Yeah, so it looks like it's about a hundred feet. I don't know yeah. what Ben would say, but I mean it's roughly what. 20 feet by five-ish. I'm not quite sure what. There's, there's a little confusion, I think, because yeah. the actual, 
It's somewhere between 10 and 20 exactly. square feet. Yeah. The whole garage is in the little envelope except for that one. Yeah, it's a little triangle. That's yes, it's the little triangle that I'm asking about. What's, yes. this, what's, what's the square, square footage? Square? I would say about 12 square feet. Well, it's, it's the... It's the, it's the hatch marks, correct? Not all the hatch marks. Well, no. the, see, a lot of the hatch, mark, hatch marks on here are for the second application, the non-conforming expansion. Yeah, right. The, but it's the hatch marks at the bottom. The bottom only line. place it's requiring a variance is the small triangle that's infringing on the rear setback. There's a, little, there's a lighter dashed line that continues the rear setback. You're also infringing on the side setback, aren't you? But, but the house is already just a couple feet from the side, so that would be the non-conforming expansion. I get it. Dif I get it. Different. I get it. I'm yeah. sorry. So, I mean, that looks, that triangle looks to me to be, I get it. conservatively speaking, somewhere between 10 and 20 square feet. Yeah. Probably closer to 10. Yeah, I'd be surprised if it was 10. Look at yeah. I mean, if the, if the dimensions of the garage are, are truly 24 by 24, I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, they are. Right. It's 12 feet. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the height of the triangle is, is four and a half feet. Mm -hmm. And the, the encroachment into the rear setback based on this plan would be... This I think, I think if, you, if you go on the... The angle of uh, perpendicular to the property line is about four feet, I think. Yeah, looks like, looks like four and a half feet. Half well, feet. there's a dimension that yeah. looks like 15 feet yep. six inches. So. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so about four and a half feet. So okay. four and a half foot encroachment into that rear setback. Anything else for the applicant before I open it up for public comment? I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any members of the public here who wish to speak on this item? Sure. My name is Ted McCarthy. I live right across the street. Uh, from Nancy, and I'm here to support her efforts at redoing the house. We approve of plans as they are. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to speak? I guess I just, as the applicant, wanted to say that um, I apologize for any confusion about what we were asking for with the garage. Um, what we're asking for really is that little triangle at the back to allow it to be a two-car garage. If the, you know, if you all feel uncomfortable with that and you feel like we're encroaching, that is your job and I understand that and I respect that. Um, at that point, we would do a one-and-a-half car garage. Um, it would just, you know, that's really the difference. Um, you know, I hope you can understand why, um, since we want to spend the rest of our days in this house that having the ability to have two cars in a garage and not be out in the ice and so forth uh, would be delightful. That said, I do understand your limitations, um, but I just want to be clear. It's just that little triangle, that less than 10 foot uh, change. So I hope that you'll consider that as you think about the pros and cons of uh, that part of our application. Thank you. Thanks. All right, I think we've had some good board discussion and further board discussion. All right, has everybody read the concerns of the two abutters? Are, are you comfortable I th I as those, is, or do you I, want I, those read into the record? I think those relate more to the, in my mind, those relate more to the uh, expansion of the non-conforming structure, because they have to do with views, right? They do for the most part. In your mind, do they? I guess there is, uh, there are some statements regarding the, the variance from Mr. Sear. Yeah, there's a couple paragraphs on the variance. I, I, I think the meat of it is, is for the non-conforming expansion, but there are a couple paragraphs about the variance.
I just want to make sure it's been properly documented that we've received them. Well, I think, yes. I, yeah, I think they should be made part of the record. I don't know yeah. that we need to read them. Right? Okay. Out loud. Okay. Time, but certainly they should be part of the record. Sure. Because we have reviewed them. Okay. So when we've heard a lot from board members tonight and from the applicant, when it comes to variances, again, we're, we're reviewing this under a set of uh, requirements or standards in section 1952B1. Uh, and I think we should go down through those and, and there's only, uh, there's only six of them, so I think we should we should talk about them uh, individually, if unless someone has an objection to that. So the first one is the need for variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Thoughts on that? Yes, it seems like the. The rationale of the raison d'etre for this proposal has to do with, in fact, the narrow depth of the lot itself, and um, as opposed to uh, the, uh, the general conditions of the neighborhood. So, on, on that basis, on that particular criteria, I think they meet that particular criteria. Yes, part of the application included a fairly detailed paragraph uh, on uh, the attachment to the application of paragraph A, so I would agree. Yep. Okay. On to number, or uh, on to letter B. The granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties in determining whether a variance would have an unreasonable detrimental effect on the use or market value of the abutting properties, the zoning board shall consider if the variance would have the effect of blocking an established view, posing a fire safety hazard, casting a shadow on an adjoining lot, reducing the appraised value of an adjoining property by 10% or more, or of eliminating the privacy of an adjoining property without an effort to mitigate the lost privacy. This is kind of a big one. You know, personally, when I look at the, if you look at the neighborhood, I think the, the aerial figure provided does a nice job of showing the neighborhood. And, you know, I think, I think this would fit in with the neighborhood character, and I don't think it would look out of place in the neighborhood. Um, and, you know, I don't think it would necessarily reduce property values either in the neighborhood. The one thing that, you know, is questionable is will it block an established view? Uh, and well, actually, I would I'd add one other thing to that um, in terms of what one of the budding uh, property owners submitted, and, and that was uh, their concern about their privacy being impacted uh, by the traffic going to the along the, the new driveway that would go to the new garage. Essentially, headlights going yes, into their sure. house, yep. things like yep. that. So. I think we've heard from the applicant that if if the variance is not approved, they would do a smaller garage. <laughs> and, and therefore, the condition would still prevail. Right. I, I grant that. Absolutely. Uh, and when it comes to views, you know, we, we do have some some comments and some photographs on the views. You know, I don't think this little ten square foot. 12 square foot, whatever it is, 
uh, area that's in the rear setback is the portion that is going to affect views. So in my mind, that that uh, standard has has been met. But I hear from others. No, I agree with that uh, analysis. It's I not the well. um, not that small triangle right. that requires a variance. That's uh, potentially that could be blocking view. Uh, so on to C. Uh, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. And then I know you had had some qu questions or thoughts on this. You know, on other variances, we, we've let slide a de minimis allowance. And you know, how long is a piece of string? You know, is this are we in outside the de minimis, de minimis uh, allowance? See, I, I see this standard a little differently than you, I think. When, when I, I think of the applicant or a prior owner creating uh, a practical difficulty, I see maybe breaking off a piece of a lot and selling it and leaving too small a lot. Oh, now I need to, now I, now I don't have enough room to actually build what I wanted to build, uh, and I need a variance. Well, that in my view is sort of the classic example of creating your own practical difficulty. Um, I think wanting, maybe wanting a garage and uh, needing a variance for that, I, I, don't, I don't see that, I don't see that the practical difficulty, I mean, there's a practical difficulty there, they can't do it without, um, without the variance, and I, I don't think they've created that condition. Sure, just as a point well, of order, do, sorry, Stanley, do we need four votes to approve the application, or as a majority? of the board currently formulated with the four of us. Three votes in the four of us. Is that understand? Is that correct then? I, I, I think you need four votes. I think it's the I think you need a majority of the entire board okay. to approve an you application. Do. Not just those present? I, I don't think that's right. No. You don't think so? No. Otherwise, it would defeat the purpose of being a quorum. We, we have we've proceeded under that assumption in the past. Yeah. I know. But well, if should we carry on? Maybe it comes to that, I'll get to the bottom of it. Sure. Just as a. Uh, sorry, Stanley, you were about to speak. I don't want you to lose your thoughts. So no, you no, I, I didn't want to interrupt you, Matt, but I, I was simply going to, to, to say uh, that. Well, I hear what, what uh, Mike is saying here. Uh, I'm not so sure that it, it can be uh, quite so cut and dry because they have created a practical difficulty by the choice of the size of the garage and the exact placement of the garage. So, yeah, I mean, it, as you guys pointed out to me, it's only, the 10 feet, which cuts both ways. I mean, you can solve that problem without coming to us. <laughs> I mean, we had a debate here two months ago about somebody whose total square footage was one square foot. I mean, we thought it was four, but we made a math error. Anyway, it was one square foot. And they came and asked for a variance, and we had an hour discussion and gave them a variance. But I think that's the problem was they were going to have to move the whole foundation. This is not <laughs> right, and I think I, I hear you. I think that you know I, I think that could be discussed under D, which is no other feasible alternative. Yes, exactly. I, I, I agree with that. Is available I, to the potential. Yeah, yeah, but yes, yeah. I, agree. Oh, I, I agree with that. So if we if we put aside the feasible or, or the practical difficulty piece, yeah, of it, it, yeah look at the feasible alternative. Um, I mean, the, the feasible alternative that the, that the applicant has presented is this 24 by 24 garage goes in front of the building. I, I don't, th that doesn't seem feasible to me, you know, as far as yeah. sticking a garage in front of the house. But 
something that maybe is a feasible alternative is yeah. creating a smaller garage. Maybe. Sure, just to um, add more mud to the picture here. So the definition of practical difficulty, they use the, the, the phrase significant economic injury is italicized. So the, the argument here is that how much effort do you have to come within the setbacks? And eventually the, the, there has been effort to shoehorn um, the, their build in, in the setbacks. And arguably a, a, there's a little overlap of, of that triangle portion. So, you know, is there, have, there, have they met the requirements? You know, how much more effort is required? Do you, do you just say, right, you have to put it in the front? You know, you know to over, essentially over 10, potentially 10 square feet of a variance. So my, my, my thinking is that this, the definition is a slight allowance for, if you show that you could have a smaller garage, Let's think about that for a moment. It results in a significant economic injury to the property owner. I say essentially, but for the variance. Maybe I'm just get back to my same position that you know you can have a smaller garage. Yeah, when, when you know the other. The other thing that comes to mind is, can it slide uh, east and out of that rear setback? But at, but at that point, I think you, you have a very hard time getting into the garage. So I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's feasible either. Uh, if we just go through the, the others while we're here, the granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. Uh, I don't think it, I don't see any evidence that it would. Yeah. I mean. The applicant did address that in answer to the question. Yeah. Uh, and F, the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. I, I don't believe it is. Um, well, I just have a, a quick point on that because um, I wanted to ask Ben if we can multitask. Mm -hmm. um, so we're on the last criteria. There's a reference to a, a main statute, Title 38, 535. This is on um, page 55 of code. Thank you. Shoreline areas. Do you know what that's a reference to? So, I look on the zone, zone map. Zone. Yeah. 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 Yes. There's a key for shoreline zoning. And, that, and I don't have a magnifying glass, but if, if that's the polka dot, and we, then we go over to the Lawson Road, how do we determine whether, assuming that this is the correct Interpretation does that apply to that, and whether that applies to section F? Excuse me. By the way, it does take four members to grant a variance. Yes, it does. Right. No abstentions. Okay. Thanks, John. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I could. I could measure it to see if any part of the property is i mean if 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 the shoreland zone clips this property it's the very front of the property uh, near the road hundreds uh over 100 feet you know away from the proposal so the bay would almost cover across the street so that's the shoreline Possibly the road itself. The, the shoreline zone is 250 feet from the ocean. Yeah, right, so there's the, the bay there, whatever, yep. whatever the bay is called. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, Park there's... Cove. Okay. 
Um, so there, there is a house that's there and it has a very long front lawn. So that's probably 200 feet. There's a front, there's the house and there's the, you know, the front lawn and then the street. And so we're probably potentially on the front portion of the lot here. It's, it looks to be close. It's, it's possible that it clips the front corner of the lot. I could try to run upstairs and measure it on the GIS if, if necessary. Well, just so clarification, uh, in the ordinance, the, the property is not located in whole or in part within shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. And so when we look in the back, there's a very thin ribbon that suggests that there's a um, that part of town is the shoreland, and that's what we're struggling with. It. Are you aware of the of where exactly the shoreland zone line is relative to the? The surveyor makes no mention of it. Right. So, right. yeah. I think there's, a, there's quite a bit of distance on the other side of the road to the, to the water. I so the person who lives across the street, and so there's a lot of land between them and the water. And sure. Their house, and their front yard, and the road. I've been told we're not affected by that when we purchased the property. Of course, I, you know, before we Understood. <laughs> yep. Yep. According, according to the zoning map, it's not in the shoreland zone. You can, you can see the line falls south of Lawson Road on a blown up version of the zoning map. So that's now part of the record. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I see we're back to C and D. <laughs> The practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or a prior owner, or no, and no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. Uh, it sounds like the four of us agree that the other standards have been met, but there's a question on those. Uh, Matt, are, are you still still having trouble with the, the practical difficulty? What's the problem with having the variance? And that gets back into the, the power for me and us to, to exercise the us as a board to allow it. Now, unfortunately, there's four votes. I was thinking that abstention would be a nice way to uh, you know, <laughs> allow us to proceed, but uh, I'm, I'm, all four of us has to vote on it. That's right. And so, do we well, say, as a rule of thumb? Well, for what it's worth, I, I'm not comfortable uh, uh, saying that that condition has been satisfied either. Yeah. yeah. Because in the past, I think uh, the de minimis allowance was we're talking the inches or a foot, uh, something that almost nothing. I mean, the, the line of a pencil on the, on the map. Um, Well, but in that situation, there was a retaining wall and a sewer pipe and a, and a garage wall. And I mean, there was, it was ridiculous what that three and a half inches, there was a significant, substantial, was, uh, here it doesn't I mean, frankly seem. The other thing that, one of the, the criteria that's not discussed is that, you know, this is a fairly, narrow lot anyways, and the, the structure is, is dominating the space. Um, you know, what's a little more? You know, but, you know, what's a little, a lot, you know, apparently there is a lot more. Um, but it's only that little triangle. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think the, in my mind, the area of this thing, whether it's, or the, the magnitude of the encroachment, whether it's encroaching an inch or whether it's encroaching 25 feet. Uh, I, don't th I don't think that has a bearing on the practical difficulty. 
be, um, or no feasible alternative. I mean, I, that's when we start to get into it having an, uh, an effect on the natural environment or uh, effect on uh, abutting property values. But it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like we're going to um, really come to a, a finding that um, yeah. that C or D has been has been met. Is that? I agree. I agree. Like? Yeah, I have a problem with four. I just can't say it. So, okay, we can do the house. Hmm? We can do the house. Yeah. Um, we have to? Should we? That's why should we go through the process of voting sure. on this yes. first? Yes. Okay. So let me find. Those in favor? Opposed? Three to one. I guess that. Yeah, <clears throat> we should uh, go through the findings. Right. Uh, but a three to one vote passes in that case, even though four of us didn't. Uh, well, it just. It's it's kind of, kind of, we just need four for variance. To approve, right. So, so either way, it's, I guess it's been denied. The other thing, is it a variance? Yes, it is. Yes. Somebody so disagree with it? Hmm? If somebody does agree with the other one, I'm sorry. To be so outspoken. Do we not have four votes for the House? Wait, we haven't come to that yet. Hmm? No, right. What are we asking? For the expansion, yeah. I'm sorry. So I understand we need four votes to pass a variance. Correct. Oh, dude. Correct. Clearly we don't have that, so not, I'm, I'm fine. So I'll go through the findings of fact for this uh, variance request for map U9, lot 24, 14 Lawson, Road, 14 Lawson Road. The applicant is Kevin Brown, representing the owners of the property. Thomas and Nancy Ruddy are the owners of record of the subject property. 14 Lawson Road is a non-conforming lot in the RA district. The required setbacks are 25 feet from the front property line, 25 feet from the sides, and 20 feet from the rear property line. The applicant wishes to add a garage to the rear of the house 15 feet 6 inches from the rear property line, where the zoning ordinance requires 20 feet. So additional findings of fact. The need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property. Well, I mean, do we need to find... Well, in, in the past, you've gone to the problem, just the problem so and nixed the other nixed ones, the ones yeah. and said... Okay. Go right down to it. Which will take us to three. Yeah. The practical difficulty is the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Is that what the board... Huh. Is and, and you should probably say why if you're going to have that finding. Because does anyone wish to? The dimensions of the garage could be smaller, or there could be different location. There's other, because actually it feeds into the next one. There is all other alternatives. Right. Yeah, we'll get to that one. But the... <coughs> The practical difficulty has been created by the applicant. 
is the result of the action taken by the applicant. Which is what? To design it? To, to um, provide a design that puts him into rear setback. Mm -hmm. And four, uh, just... other feasible yeah. alternatives to a variance are available to the petitioner. Correct. Do we want to expand on that? The one we've talked about is reducing the size of the garage. We could say that if we'd like, I mean, it could be such as reducing the size of the garage constructing the garage elsewhere on the property. Off the last two draft findings of that. That's right. I have a motion to approve the findings of fact as amended. Okay. Second. All those in favor? So the variance has been denied. Do you wish to, do we still want to push forward with the? They're completely different issues, so yeah. Uh, so understood. Yeah, yeah, so. Great. So, so, so we, we do. Yeah. Uh, valid question. Would you proceed with the next agenda item? Would you? be asking the board to view your application, simply taking that 10 to 20 square foot triangle off? Yes. We would, either we would angle the back to go along the property line, which is great, but, or we would bring that whole end wall in to get it in the setback. It's about six foot four. We'd have to shrink. So it would be like an 18 foot wide garage. Okay. So we just have to make that clear on the record that the second agenda item is being heard as if that triangle is not on the site plan that you're looking at. Okay. They still need a variance for that, huh? No. Yeah. Well, then why do we have to? I mean, they can just do that with you, right? Yeah. Right, but we just don't want it to appear that you approved that variance triangle in along with the second approval because okay. it's the same set of plans. Okay. So would, we wouldn't come, need to come back for that part of the garage being shrunk? Or we can do that on your Right. If you, if you pull the garage back to meet the 20-foot setback, yeah. then you're, you're fine. Okay. You, you still need the non-conforming expan expansion approval Right. For a little bit of the garage that's back there in the 25. Okay. But that, that part of it can fall into this. Okay. Just that small triangle okay. has to disappear okay. for this part of the approval. So now, just for the board's benefit, we're reviewing the, the expansions that are with that that do have that crosshatch, the gray, air, dark gray with the crosshatch, with the exception of the area that will be pulled out of the rear setback. And I'll ask the applicant to, 
I feel like we've heard <laughs> we've heard enough <laughs> background information. Do you wish to add anything in support of this this application? I, I think other than you know, I think I'll re reiterate the, the need to, to help balance the view not being blocked. That's part of the reason why the garage was pushed back, sure. as well as getting out of the garage, like you had suggested, on the other side, on the east side. Um, and you know, we're not using our building envelope where we could because of the views. So, just reiterating that. So, I can take any questions as, as you have them. Sure. Is that okay? I, sure. I don't. I don't want to belabor. Um, the only thing I wanted to say is that. Um, I was genuinely perplexed by Jerry Sears' um, letter. Um, we met with him and we actually had him redraw everything at our expense because he told us he wanted us to put it on the other side so he could keep his view. And we went to the people at 10 Lawson and said, look, this would be really close to you. Are you okay with that? Like, yeah, it's fine because it's kind of back away from them and everything else. Um, so the, the, the moving back of the shed footprint is also partially to um, help neighbors who are on the other side of us, the people who are close to the shed. It is really close to their property line, um, and there's a, um, a pole there and everything else. And so the shed's kind of in the way for everybody. And so taking that down and moving that footprint back is something that, and maintaining the front of the house is something that we've talked to multiple neighbor, neighbors about. And many people are excited about us doing that. It would be a good thing. It would also allow us to get rid of what we would lovingly refer to as our Clampett front yard that doesn't have a, a driveway, doesn't have, you know. So there, there is more to it. Um, and the, if, if we are not able to take the buildable envelope and move it to the west side of the house, then we'll probably just build well, where the buildable envelope is currently, which will then obstruct his view more. So I'm, I'm genuinely perplexed. I'm not sure, if, I, I don't know, can't quite figure out where they're coming from, but, and I wish he were here to talk about it. He's a lovely man, don't know what's going on, but um, I just wanted to share that, that that was really our intent. Um, we were really trying to keep everybody happy by moving that over there. So that's where we are. Thank you. Any additional questions of the applicant on board? structure will have a poor frost wall with the foundation. Um, the, the expansion off where, you know, on the side will have a new foundation frost wall that will go down four feet, but it'll, we'll have to figure out, we haven't gone that far to figure out structurally how we're going to tie, you know, if there's any, diff, you know, luckily I think we're all on ledge, so 
we'll be pinning to ledge. So in terms of one moving different than another, I don't. I think because of the, you know, we're, we're probably going to pin into the ledge most likely. Okay. Thank you. And while you're while you're up there, can you can you um, talk about the septic system? So the, it looks like the existing one is right in the footprint of the yes. proposed expansion, so it'll be moved. We yeah, we have a design for a new septic um, to the front of the lot because the current current one is underneath where the garage. Yeah. Yep. And Ben, have you has that been reviewed? And it has not been approved yet. yet. Okay. But we do have a stamped design. They did submit a, a design yeah. from a licensed designer. Okay. Thanks. Yep. So for this one, just again for clarification. Uh, Enlargement of a non-conforming structure not in compliance with the setbacks uh, may be permitted provided that such enlargement is in compliance with the setbacks to the greatest extent practical as determined by the ZBA in accordance uh, with the purposes of this ordinance. In no case shall a structure be enlarged so as to increase its non-conformity. And section 19... 43B4 points us back to 1943B2 um, uh, gives us criteria uh, to determine whether or not the proposal is meeting the setbacks to the greatest practical extent. So when we go to that section, we are to consider the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for, sh for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, if any, and other on-site suitable soils for septic systems, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Any board members have any thoughts on those? Essentially, label number 20, is that right? 19. No, no, sorry. Uh, 19. Correct, 19. It's yeah. 19 and the one further back at the top of the page. If, if you look at the aerial, yeah. it's the two northern most houses. Okay. And in that one, they, they, they both have a view corridor between these two houses. Sure. I just make an observation, so that please, this point is on, on the record, is that those two lots are quite far away, um, they actually have to look through one property across the street and then another property and then there's the water view. Um, it's not a clear shot as what we've seen in other um, properties. There are some photos that, sh that show and suggest um, that some people do see um, uh, the water, Pond Cove, thank you for pointing that. Um, um, I also wanted to make a point that they happen to be a somewhat telling comment that they've been sensitive to the neighbor's comment about views, and so they've restricted the enlargement to accommodate that. But in fact, if they decided not to um, take account of that, they could have gone up, let's say, 30 smart feet, put a monolithic structure there, and, and created a more um, obstruction. Um, I'm not sure if that does find its irony, but I just thought that was going to be interesting that that has unfolded here. Yeah. 
And the other point that I wanted to ask uh, Ben and also the other members, where is the provision that talks about enlargement up to 30%? Is this the same provision or is that a different code section? That, that's a different code that's section. Fine, I don't want to okay. cloud the waters any further. I, I'll, I'll also point out that I don't think any of the existing non-conformities are being increased. <laughs> you know what I mean? There, there, there are non-conformities on both sides here, yep. and the proposal will improve both of those non-conformities. Uh, the proposed non-conformity in the back has already been dealt with and will not be will not be part of the proposed plan so uh, you know I think they've, they've met that in my mind the only you know I you look at the size of the lot the slope of the land the ability to put a septic system in uh, the potential for soil erosion I think I think all those things can be overcome and I don't see too much of an issue the the one The one point that I think probably warrants further discussion is the impact on views. We've got a neighbor or two neighbors in the back who are saying their views are being impacted. Um, I tend to agree with you, Matt. I think um, I think it sounds like the applicant has has done a nice job um, sort of proposing a, a lower uh, addition on that side of the building um, where the existing garage is and it's not going to be any taller than that existing garage. It is being pulled back closer to the butters but um, it's you know as I look at the these elevation drawings, it, it seems like it, it's, a, it's not going to be a, an unreasonable or a big impact on views in my mind. Anyways. back to my earlier comment, could we identify the people that have objected by to, to the view issue? I know that we mentioned that the, one of them is um, Jeremy Sear. Um, and then there's a, another email that came in that looks like today, uh, Daniel Poti. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I've just read through his two Concerns. One deals with the variance, which is no longer on the table. Um, uh, the other one has to do with the um, extension would obstruct our water views from the first floor of our home. Um, but that's um, not an outright objection because they go on saying we would otherwise wholeheartedly support removing the detached shed in conjunction with the proposed renovation. So uh, I'm it's not an absolute objection because part they do like part of what's being done here to the property. So that's that's one issue. Um, do you know, do you have a copy of the other objections? I do. It's this Staples packet with photos. read into the record the point that was um, mentioned in the submittal by 
Jeremy Sear. I'll quote, the, the Ruddies have been thoughtful in attempting to preserve my current view. However, it is unclear from their proposal that my view will remain fully intact. And it appears that the garage location will alter the character of the neighborhood. Full stop. Uh, close quote. Maybe some of the other board members are familiar with this. Are, uh, when I think about that area, the, the houses on Shore Road sit up quite a bit, don't they? From yeah, I'm trying to remember where this is. Certainly from the, the other side of Lawson, I think they do, but maybe from, maybe from this side there. They're closer in elevation. I mean, the photos from Mr. Sear. Seem to rep seem to show that it's kind of close in elevation. They sit a little higher. Yeah. John, do you guys have thoughts on the, the view or any of those other considerations? Did you ask a question? I asked <laughs> if you had any thoughts on the, the impact on views or any of the other uh, well, considerations for taking um, account. Actually, I find Mr. I guess it's Sears' view, uh, pictures on his views highly convincing from <laughs> the applicant's point of view. Um, not, it's not clear to me what's significantly being impacted. I mean, I can see that this time of year with the leaves off the trees, I think he has views similar to what I have. Um, I don't have any leaves on my neighbor's trees. Um, I guess to me that's just doesn't seem to be an issue. Right. <laughs> he specifically shows red boxes where things are being removed, and red boxes where they're wanting to put something in their backyard, which seems to me a reasonable thing to do, that aren't going to impact the view at all. I'm not sure what this is. So I, I um, that doesn't have any significance to me. And I think that, as I indicated earlier, it seems to me that the impact on the, you know, the setbacks is not an issue the way the statute works. So I have no problem with this. Stan, can I add anything? Sounds like we have a general consensus on on the items. Anyone care to make a motion?
I move to approve the application to remodel and expand a non-conforming single family dwelling at 14 Lawson Road. That is on the agenda as item number three. I'll second. John's seconded it. Uh, all those in favor? Four to zero. I'll go through the findings of fact. This is a request of Kevin Brown representing the property owners Thomas and Nancy Ruddy to remodel and expand a non conforming single family dwelling at 14 Lawson Road, map U8, lot 24, based on section 19 4 3 B4 of the zoning ordinance. The subject lot is a non conforming lot in the RA zone. The required setbacks are 25 feet from the front property line, 25 feet from the sides, and 20 feet from the rear property line. The structure on the lot is a non conforming structure because the house is 2 feet 7.25 inches from one side property line and 6 feet 10 inches from the other side property line. The applicant would like to expand the house within the 25 foot required side setback, but they will not be increasing the nonconformity because they are not proposing to get closer to the property line than the existing nonconforming structure. Additional findings of fact, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soil suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. And two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. I offer a friendly amendment. Certainly. Um, going back to finding the fact number four. Mm -hmm. um, this is just to uh, keep this consistent with what we decided on the variance. Uh, the applicant would like to expand the house within the 25 foot required side setback, as you can say, and within the 20 foot required rear setback. But And continue on. That's the only change. In other words, I'm, I'm adding. Uh, right, but I'd like to add and within the 20 foot required rear setback. I think they are. I think they've pulled that out of the proposed. Well, I just like to be certain about that, and, and it's not going to hurt to say. <clears throat> that that's what we established at the front end of the meeting that they're not going to be within the rear setback. They're, they're not yeah they're not proposing to be in that setback I'm just trying to make sure that we we have enough information on record to support that yeah I mean may, maybe maybe a, an additional finding saying uh, no expansion into the 20 foot rear setback is proposed that's correct that would be that would do it. yeah I would yeah, I would add a finding specifically that st specifically states that. Okay. I would also suggest uh, that you pull out the impact on view finding out of that paragraph and have a separate expand finding on, it. on and expand on that because that's why we have the remand sure. for the other. Understood. So let me just note down uh, an additional finding will be uh, no expansion is proposed within the 25, the 20 foot required rear setback. Maybe even no structure is proposed. Okay.
And so <clears throat> we will amend additional finding number one to strike the impact on views. And we'll create an additional finding of fact number four. Do you have the names of the three? I thought there were three, but if you think there are more people that have raised the issue of views, you know, because I have Daniel Poutine, mm -hmm. um, Jeremy Sear, Jeremy Sear, and the other person. I thought it was that house here. That's uh, Jeremy. No, th this is Jeremy Sear, and this is ah, Poutine. All right, so the, those are the two. I'm not aware of a third. We had two emails in support of the application. Yeah. Okay, so that's just the two then? Yes. Okay. Someone want to take a crack at crafting a finding related to impact on views? <coughs> start by saying that the board has considered uh, the impact on views and reviewed information and photographs provided by abutters. Abutters perhaps is not the right um, word. I think one is not in the butter, but I think um, neighbors in the uh, neighbors, or um, or if you want to identify them by name or the, their address. That's fine with me. I have a friendly amendment once you get finished with that sentence. Shall I read you what I have so far, or would you like to? Yes, sure. Okay. Uh, what I have so far is the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the impact on views and reviewed information and photographs provided by Jeremy Sear and Daniel Potit and determined that the proposal will not have a significant impact on views. Is it better just to say it butters? No, because as Matt said, they're not proposed butters. They're what? They're not both butters. Direct. One of them is not a direct. You could say neighbors instead of it. Yeah, we we'll say just neighbors instead of brothers. I just think. Sure. Because it's <laughs> like we didn't consider anybody else's right. views. Well, we indirectly did. Sure. My friendly amendment was that we've also considered the testimony by the applicant. I'm sorry? By the applicant. The, the, yeah. the, I would agree with that. Yeah. The, the discussion that we had.
So let me read that. Yeah, please back one more time. Mm -hmm. Sure. <clears throat> the, Z the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the impact on views and reviewed information and photographs provided by neighbors and uh, I would say information and uh, building elevations provided by the applicant. Okay. And determined that the proposal will not have a significant impact on views. That's fine. Anything about the distance of those neighbors from, from the water, which is considerable. You think that's if you look at the yeah, I, it's almost 200 feet. What's more? Yeah, more this is 250 feet. Yeah, yes, so from the water. So, yeah. uh, Both neighbors um, that raised concerns were uh, their property line, uh, their view is from uh, their property is over 500 feet, whatever that estimate is. That's 200. Uh, yeah, probably close to, close to 500. You want to put the S four hundred to five hundred feet? Sure. For the water. Sure. Okay. From Ponco, sorry. That's the, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about the ocean, the, the Atlantic. Right. Okay. Final time here. Four, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the impact on views and reviewed information and photographs provided by neighbors and information and building elevations provided by the applicant. And also notes that Neighboring properties, I don't know the craft here, are located over 400 to 500 feet from the. I don't, I don't, we don't know that. I mean, that's, you know, that's say, gee, it's four or five. Yeah, I don't think well, we have a putting that into specific findings. Okay, yeah, so I think we're getting pretty, yeah, it's pretty specific as well. Yeah, I, yeah. you're going to get yourself hung up. Comfortable with what we have, I suppose we. Like that SWOT requirement? Yeah. Okay. So, and determined that the proposal will not have a significant impact on views. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. I hear a motion to accept, approve the findings of fact as amended. Here, one more time. Sure, just the findings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the impact on views and reviewed information and photographs provided by neighbors and information and building elevations provided by the applicant and determined that the proposal will not have a significant impact on the views. Thank you. Let's go. I move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Or zero. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you for your thoughtfulness. I really appreciate the process of all the support about the parents. I totally understand. Um, and, and thank you for your contribution to town. I know this is like, we sat here and we're like, oh my God, we could need this for some months. So thank you for doing that. It's a big position on the lives. So I appreciate it. Thank you for your careful presentation. Adjourn the <laughs> Before we meet adjourn, I, I, I simply wanted to
to uh, thank the board members and the code officer as well as our secretary for all of the uh, work that, that all we have done during the three years of my tenure here. And I think I would like to so move that we commend. Yeah. 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 This is not your last uh, meeting, Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stan. You're, you've been an invaluable member. And uh, <laughs> we'll enjoy the meeting. Stand.